This is our full build process video that starts with making a cardboard scale model, shows the year and a half of working in our free time on the build, and finishes with the reveal of our DIY treehouse in northern Minnesota. We're not professional builders. We've never done anything like this. We did not hire any contractors. This was all do-it-yourself. Uh, our family and my father and my uncle and so we wanted to keep it relatively simple. Uh, the design was built around the windows rather than designing and then buying the windows. We actually found salvage windows uh, and so it really depended on uh, uh, keeping that the dimensions of the windows based on what we had and in addition we had to design around the local zoning uh, requirements. Uh, the zoning officials in the area uh, are relatively strict. And because of that, uh, we had to limit the size to, of the in, indoor per portion to about 75 square feet so that we could avoid any need for uh, building permits and inspections. And so that's what we did. It's a relatively small space, but it's enough to just hang out. Our kids can use it um, and just kind of enjoy. This little guy is about uh, a, an adult sized uh, uh, person to scale. So kind of giving you an idea of uh, about how big it is. And there's our roof. If there's anything else that you would really like to know about our thought process or what the details are, definitely leave a comment and let's get into the videos. The site is a stand of red pines and there's a group of four trees in a rectangle and one more tree in the middle. The middle tree goes up through the deck and an opening in the roof on the outside of the structure. The trees are overlooking a ravine that drops 60 feet to a creek below and the old car left behind by previous owners. The structure is fully supported by the four trees using standard hardware called treehouse attachment bolts that are screwed into pre-drilled holes in each tree. We used a water level, which is a clear plastic tube full of water, to make sure the heights of the four bolts were level. You place one end of the tube at the first bolt and then move the other end of the tube to the other trees and use the height of the water in the tube as a level. There are two structural beams and each beam spans across two of the bolts. The beams are attached to the bolts to allow the trees to move in the wind and the trees definitely move in the wind. Each beam weighed several hundred pounds and we raised them up to the platform height of about 12 feet off the ground without any powered equipment, just using two boat winches secured to the trees above the bolts. We were also very fortunate to have family willing to come up and help. The floor joists were placed on the beams and were positioned to avoid the trees, so this meant the spacing was irregular and they were not all parallel. The joists were cantilevered past the beams by two feet to increase the floor and deck area. We put blocking between all of the joists to keep them in place. Once the joists were in place, we set plywood subfloor temporarily on top and measured the positions of each wall at the floor height and roof height because several trees leaned slightly and the measurements at ground level were no longer accurate. Then we removed the subfloor and brought it back to home base in Minneapolis. We built a temporary platform in our neighbor's yard, thanks neighbors, and prefabricated the framing on the ground. It was easier to build on the ground but it also made it possible to make progress even if I had to be home and working during the day. The panels were all designed in sections that were less than six feet wide 
so we could fit them on standard utility trailers. We did not add any sheathing because the panels would have been too heavy to lift into the trees without equipment. So we disassembled the temporary structure and transported all of the framing panels up to the site. First, we reassembled the original subfloor pieces. Then we started by installing deck boards so we had more room to work on the platform. The decking was rough sawn lumber from a local mill that was extra thick so the boards could span the wide gaps between joists where we had to avoid trees. Then we reassembled the wall panels. We used zip system sheathing and taped the seams so we didn't need any additional house wrap. The rafters were exposed Douglas fir and the finished ceiling was cedar shiplap siding on top of the rafters. We used two by fours on top of the shiplap to create overhangs and added insulation in the spaces above the indoor area. We used more zip sheathing for the roof and used an air gap mat under cedar shingles. The rest of the exterior siding and trim was more cedar, most of it sourced as overstock or lower grades to keep costs down. It was almost winter of the first year when we had the exterior mostly complete. We didn't keep track exactly of the time spent, but it was somewhere around 30 days of work, both at home and on site. One lesson learned, since we had never done something like this, was that working on ladders the entire time slows things down. When we started, we hoped to finish in one summer, but that was definitely not how things turned out. It was looking great, but there was a lot left to do. The deck and interior would have to wait. We stored extra materials and tools and boarded up the door for winter. We get real winters there, so we weren't planning on doing much for another six months. All right, here we are. Looks a little bit different. Try not to fall. I don't think we've had a whole lot of trees down, but I'm sure there are some. I 
made one trip up to the site following a big storm with deep, heavy snow that downed a lot of trees just to make sure everything was in one piece. I shoveled the deck to be safe, and since we had gotten some new battery-powered outdoor lights for Christmas, I did a small project to get these installed. The hanging lantern has a battery pack inside that can power the string lights that are hanging from the roof over the deck. Okay, the lights are up. Pretty happy with it. The one in the very end I'll have to do later when I can get a taller ladder. But I think that'll be really nice for up here some light when it's getting dark. I'm going to start working on the panels we will use for the deck railing. It's going to be a design that I saw online. It looks like it will be straightforward to build. Uh, it uses pieces of fence paneling, uh, sometimes called like a hog panel. And so we'll have a rectangle of this panel framed with two by two cedar. Okay, this is kind of what it looks like assembled. Working on a bar top. This will sit on top of the deck railing at the tree house and we'll have some bar seating up along the side that overlooks the ravine. So a place to sit and enjoy the view. The bar top was custom made from cedar two inch lumber. I added a coating of UV stabilized epoxy coat so it would be easier to wipe off and keep clean and dry even if it is an outdoor surface. Once the bar top and all of the deck railing panels were done, it was time to load up the trailer again and head up for a weekend with the whole family there to help. It was definitely a relief to get the railing on and feel like we could spend time up there a little more safely.
This is our new bar top seating area looking over the ravine. This is the material that we will be using for the floor inside. I thought I would give a good view of it outside where the light's a little better. Uh, this is a material called thermally modified wood. This is actually oak. The process for the thermally modified wood changes the cellular structure of the wood so that it isn't susceptible to moisture and it's less likely to rot. We chose this material because the treehouse might be exposed to more of the elements than a typical interior. I also had some leftover roofing underlayment and I used this under the floor since it was available and since the subfloor is exposed to the outside below the treehouse. The family came up for the second day of flooring and this was a big help so the kids could happily use the stapler while I made the cuts. Here's our finished floor. The electrical boxes will be for use sometime in the future. We don't plan to run wiring uh, right now. There's nowhere to run it from. Um, but eventually we'll have a cabin. We can run wire wiring from there and maybe use this for uh, a desk and uh, lighting, things like that. Uh, but for now, it'll just be a uh, conduit so we can pull the wire later. Well, my project for today is to start trimming off all of this uh, extra foam sealant and to come in and trim any uh, window shims that are around the windows. And after that, I will start insulating the walls. Well, this is a big milestone. We are now fully insulated inside and it is ready to start uh, installing the cedar uh, interior paneling. One of the small side projects I worked on while I was at home was a custom basket that we could use to haul things up to the treehouse. Since the only access was a ship's ladder, we figured not everyone would want to climb the ladder with just one arm. The basket was made of extra oak flooring planks 
so it will hopefully be durable and hold up to exposure outside. It's big enough for some food and drinks and other supplies. I was still figuring out how to safely raise and lower the box, but you'll see the final results later in the video. The interior walls were finished in all cedar trim and tongue and groove. Just like the outside, it was generally overstock or lower grades to reduce costs. The first pieces of trim on the wall of windows is complete. So that is the section here. It first, I first uh, added some shim or spacer blocks here, um, and then the pieces on the inside, which would be sort of like the window jam, because these windows were salvage windows. They didn't actually come with a window jam, so this sort of recreates that piece. Uh, and now I'll uh, fill in other pieces and uh, start with some of the siding. <laughs> I wanted to stop and point out one of the pieces here that is going along the midpoint of the wall and in between the windows over here. This is actually a band of maple and I'm inserting it within the pieces of cedar tongue and groove. The reason is we will hang a loft net right here in this space. So you'll be able to climb up and have this as a mini loft. The net will need to be secured by lots of fasteners and the cedar isn't as strong. So the maple is there to give a stronger backing to the loft net. Most of the cedar used for the interior and exterior was a grade that included knots and imperfections. Depending on the location, there were times I cut out the bad parts, so I had a supply of interesting and imperfect wood scraps. We decided to use these bits for a small art project. The plan was to make what is basically a mosaic of interesting pieces of cedar. Our kids decided on the overall shape and layout. I cut lots of tiny knot holes and rough edges and other artistic scraps. The family arranged all of the pieces onto a plywood backing and art was made. With leaves changing for the fall of our second build year, we needed to give a final push to finish the interior before we stopped again for winter. Okay. Yeah. 
piece of cedar baseboard is the last piece of the interior that needs cut and nailed. With the nail gun put away, I had a few more hours of interior finish work to fill nail holes and to sand, but the end was in sight. We cleaned up all of the messes, sealed the wood floor, and installed the barn door and other interior hardware. And then we could end the season feeling like it was done. After another 20 days of building during the second year, we can show everyone what it looks like inside. Thanks for watching and making it this far. The sliding barn door opens to a view of the custom made wood art that is made from all of the interesting knot holes and bits of character from the cedar materials of the exterior and interior wood. The interior tongue and groove feels warm and cozy and has lots of natural light and interior lighting with battery powered lanterns. The interior is furnished for our kids as a hangout space. Someday we may rearrange for something else, but this is what we planned from the beginning. We've had comments that it's too small and should have space for a bed but that was never the goal. The loft net is very comfortable and is big enough for an adult or a few kids. And it's a great bird's eye view into the trees and down the ravine. Below the loft net, we have a nice comfortable bean bag. The loft net itself is open enough that it doesn't make the space feel too closed off. I am just over six feet tall and the loft net is installed at a height just high enough that I can walk underneath it if no one is up on top. We installed custom made wooden climbing holds. You put your feet and your hands on these holds to climb up to the net. You can take your shoes off and still climb up the holds comfortably and keep the walls and net clean. At least that's what we're hoping. We'll have to wait and see until after another winter. 
Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know what you think or what else you would like to know in the comments. The treehouse is done, but we have more projects planned at the property. So subscribe if you want to see more.